Hi everybody, hope you're well. So back at the end of March, in, in fact, I think it was Easter that we went away, uh, we stayed off grid and uh, we went there for a number of days and it was really lovely, very sunny, and we really enjoyed ourselves doing absolutely nothing apart from unwinding. Hence the reason why I never filmed it. Anyway, whilst we're away, and if you're anything like me, your brain never actually switches off. And I started thinking about how to improve our solar setup here in the caravan. Now, to put it in context, in this caravan, we have a 100 watt panel fitted from the factory on this caravan. And it's been brilliant. It's been fantastic with us over the winter months whilst we're in storage. And obviously it works very well whilst we're on site. The reasons why I wanted to improve our solar setup is not because that this is a bad system, but I want to increase the chance of us getting charged when the weather is not so bright, which is perhaps more, more often than not. Being able to get solar charged when the weather isn't so great means that we can go off grid for longer over the year. Now there is a way of us improving our solar setup with one change. You may be thinking, well, the way to do that is to add more solar panels onto the caravan. And absolutely, that is one way of getting more solar charge into our leisure battery. But another very clever way is to simply change the controller. Now to understand how this is possible, let's discuss our solar setup here in the caravan. Okay, the first thing you need to know is there are in fact three separate elements when we talk about our solar setup. There is of course the solar panel, which is on the roof. There's a controller and the battery. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to be talking about 12 volt systems. There are obviously solar setups for the house. There are solar setups now in farms all around the UK. But in the context of this video, let's discuss this leisure vehicle. So you might be thinking that the solar panel outputs 12 volts if we're talking about a 12 volt system. Well, that really isn't the case. The output voltage for the solar panel can actually swing quite a lot. It can be quite low and it can be quite high. And this is down to a few things. It's down to the weather, the angle of the sun, the position of the caravan. In fact, any environmental change can have a huge impact on the voltage of the panel. So for me to better show this to you, let me take my multimeter and plug it into the solar panel here at the controller in the cupboard. As you can see, we have anywhere between 19 and a half and 20 volts coming out of the panel. Now, if I plug this straight into our battery, I'd simply boil the liquid away and ruin the battery. Okay, so the next item on our solar setup here in the caravan, and I've briefly mentioned it, is the controller. It's sometimes referred to as a regulator, and that's because it will take the variable voltage from the solar panel and give a constant, usable and safe voltage to the battery that the battery can safely handle. Different controllers do this in different ways, as I will demonstrate to you a bit later on. So again, let's plug the multimeter into the controller up here and let me show you the voltage which is being sent onto the battery. So as you can see, it's just over 14.5 volts, which the battery is more than happy to receive when it's taking a charge. Okay, and finally, we have the leisure battery, and that's for all things 12 volts here around the caravan. For instance, our heating, the fridge, uh, the igniter on the cooker, the water pump, the lights, everything here requires 12 volts, and that is taken from the battery. Okay, so that's what we have here in the caravan. What change can I make here to improve our setup? Well, it's down to the controller. So why does changing the controller make any difference at all? The vast majority of controllers in the caravans are known as PWM. This stands for pulse width modulation. As I mentioned, it will take the variable voltage from the solar panel and send a constant usable and safe voltage to the battery. Now I'm going to use a bit of kit, I'm called an oscilloscope, and I'm going to demonstrate to you exactly what a PWM controller does and how it sends charge to the battery. So let's go and hook it up in the cupboard and I'll show you what's going on. What you are actually seeing here is the controller sending a charge to the battery in pulses. In between the pulses of power, the controller measures the voltage of the battery, and if it thinks the battery needs more power, it will increase the width of the next pulse and then measure it again. Then, if it thinks the battery is full, it will reduce the width of the pulses, and so on. Now, this constant changing of widths of each pulse is known as modulating. This is where we can get the term pulse width modulation. You can probably see a very minor change in the waveform on the screen. Now, on the oscilloscope display, the spikes are not the power going into the battery. It's the flat line at the bottom. And this is because the voltage is pulled down as the controller sends charge to the battery. 
the pause between each pulse is actually the peaks. This example shows a charged battery and no charge going through. On this example it shows the battery needing some charge, so you should see quite a big difference. Watch what happens when I switch on the lights of the caravan. The voltage of the battery will drop, triggering the controller to send some charge to the battery, and you should see quite clearly the width of the pulse change. Now PWM controllers do have a bit of a problem, they're not very efficient. So let me put an example on the screen and show you how bad the efficiency can be on a PWM controller. In this example the 100 watt solar panel is supplying 20 volts at 5 amps to our controller. As you would have seen previously this is not uncommon. Our PWM controller takes the 20 volts from our 100 watt solar panel and it delivers a safe 13 volt to the battery with 5 amps of current. The difference between the input from the panel and the output to the battery is 7 volts, and this power is lost. To better understand the lack of efficiency, let's do some quick maths. Let's have a look at the power the battery is receiving. 13 volts multiplied by 5 amps, and we can see that it only gets 65 watts of power. The difference between the input and the output of this controller is 35 watts. Put it in simple terms, that's 35 watts of power we could be using to charge the battery up. In this example, the PWM controller is only 65% efficient. PWM controllers don't convert any of that wasted power to usable current. They simply lose it, and that's where the inefficiency comes from. We can improve things just simply by changing the controller to what is known as an MPPT controller. Now these things are really clever. Right, an MPPT controller stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking. It's a solar controller and it's more advanced and more efficient than its PWM counterpart. In simple terms, and I will try and keep this simple, the controller will track the current and the voltage from the panel and it will work out the most efficient point to extract all of the power. They convert any excess voltage back into usable current for charging our leisure battery. MPPT controllers can increase the efficiency of the solar panel by up to 30%. So that's like adding 30% more solar panels here on our caravan. So to better understand how this works, let's look at our example once again. So once again we have 20 volts at 5 amps of power coming out of our 100 watt solar panel. But our MPPT controller can convert excess voltage into current and it now sends 13 volts at 7.5 amps of power to the battery. So let's do some quick maths once again. 13 volts multiplied by 7.5 amps delivers 97.5 watts of usable charge going into the battery. That makes this installation 97.5% efficient in this example. So before we install the new controller, let's look at the two controllers in summary. MPPT controllers are more efficient than PWM controllers, especially in systems with high power demands. MPPT controllers are more complex and require far more advanced electronics than a PWM controller. Finally, MPPT controllers are generally more expensive than PWM controllers due to their higher efficiency and advanced electronics. Right, so the installation is incredibly simple. We're, we're basically swapping one device for another, but we are dealing with a leisure battery that can have high amounts of current. And we're also dealing with a solar panel that in daylight never really switches off. So let's take some precautions. Firstly, to stop the panel from sending any voltage on this lovely sunny day, I'm simply going to cover it with the dog's bed to cover the panel and stop it producing power. Before I disconnect the battery, I'm setting my tracker and alarm into service mode so I don't get any power down notifications from my tracking company when I disconnect the battery. So I disconnect the negative terminal first, just like a car, and then the positive. And that's it, I've completely isolated the 12 volt system. Now the power is all isolated from the panel and the battery, I'm measuring the terminals to make sure that there's no power left in the system. There's very small traces here, but it's all good. First off, I'll remove the two wires for the battery, and I'm making a note of the colours, which are blue and white. The blue is positive, and the white being the negative. The panel is red and black. Then I'll remove the two wires for the panel. 
I'm covering one of the cables with some tape just to make sure that there's no residual power. I'm also adding a cable tie around these cables to stop them disappearing down the back of the cupboard. Once done, I simply unscrew the controller from the caravan, but of course it's not that easy. Two screws are a bit difficult to get hold of, but with a flexible screwdriver, they soon come out. Brief fitting is the exact same in reverse, but before we do, let's have a closer look at the Truma SDC12 MPPT Solar Charge Controller. On the front are some LEDs. I'll discuss what these mean once it's running. On the bottom is a socket for a display, the solar and battery terminals, a fuse, and a socket for a thermal sensor. And finally, some dip switches that we need to configure for our use. In our caravan, we have a lead acid leisure battery, so we need to change these switches for that battery type. All the switches are down, apart from switch number three, which is in the up position. Right, now it's all done, let's install it. First off, I'll fix the controller to the caravan, and I can reuse two of these screw holes from the old controller, which makes a nice, neat installation. Then it's just a case of reattaching the wires for the battery. The order is slightly different than the old controller, so I'm double checking that they all go into the correct position. Once the battery terminals are tight, I screw the panel wires in, and again checked for the polarity. A visual check here to make sure that no stray wires are sticking out, and if it's so inclined, you could use a continuity check to make sure that there are no shorts. But I'm happy with my work here, so I'm ready to recommission the battery. I've reconnected the terminals on the battery, and I'll just check the voltage on the controller is correct, and indeed it is. Next, I'll make sure that the caravan switch is on, and we are golden. Next up, I'll remove the blanket off the panel. So now it's all up and running and working, I have three LEDs lit up on the front of the panel. So let's see what those all mean. Starting from the left, we have the bat low. Now this either means that the battery is below 10.5 volts, the battery is discharged, or the connection to the battery isn't correct. Or maybe the supply fuse has blown. In either case, it's not seeing 12 volts from the battery. Next up is MPP. When this is illuminated, it means the controller is charging the battery. If this was flashing, it would mean that the controller is ready to charge. If the greater than 80% is illuminated, it means the battery is almost fully charged. If it flashes with one pulse per second, the controller is too hot. Two pulses mean that we have an overvolted issue. And finally, if the BAT4 is lit up, well, guess what? Yeah, the battery is fully charged. And last but not least, if everything is flashing, the battery selection is wrong. Now I've switched the caravan on and I've switched on the lights and the radio, and I want to run the battery down a little bit to see the new controller in action. The voltage has dropped on the battery, and as you can clearly see, the BAT4 light has now gone off, meaning the controller will be sending some charge to the battery. A big question that gets asked a lot about solar panels is what happens to the solar charging when you're on electric hookup at a campsite? Well, it's really very simple and quite clever actually. Remember earlier when I mentioned how the controller tests the voltage between the pulses on a PWM controller? Well, an MPPT controller constantly tests the voltage of the battery. If either controller thinks the battery is fully charged, it will stop sending power to the battery. And this is handy in our application because when we connect the caravan to electric hookup, upon where the onboard battery charger will kick in and start to trickle charge the battery, in those instances, the battery will see a constant voltage of around 13.7 volts, making our controller think the battery is fully charged and will not send any charge to the battery. So there we go, a simple overview of the solar setup, how we can improve our chances of getting a decent charge in the battery, and an installation guide for swapping over the controller. With this particular controller, there's some additional accessories that can be used with it, and maybe I'll be purchasing those a bit later on in the year. But if you do want to see me add the digital meter to show you what's going on, then let me know and I'll add that in as a possible project later in the year. It's also worth pointing out that this controller allows me to add a lithium battery later on too. There are many controllers available on the market. Trust me, you've only got to type them into uh, Amazon or eBay and there are hundreds. I've chosen this one because it's from a reptile company. It's supplied by Truma, it's a Truma panel. I can get hold of this one from a cavern accessory shop. And also being Truma, they do have an excellent customer care service center as well here in the UK. I know that because I've had to call them up for our Truma air conditioning.
But if you want to know more details about this controller, I'll put a link to it down below. And that's it from me today. I hope this video has been useful for some of you and given you some information and some ideas on future proofing your caravan. I'll let you know how I get on with this over the coming months. So far, so good. You probably worked out that I actually did this installation yesterday. Different shirt because by Jove it was warm here when I actually did the installation. Um, and so far today it's been absolutely brilliant. I've been checking it, I've been looking at the voltages and it seems to be doing a great job. So many thanks for watching. Please do hit the subscribe button, hit the notification icon as well. If you can do all of that, then you'll catch us in our very next upload. Many thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.